Hey, this is Nikki G, and welcome to Better Commander. Today we're going all the way back to 2018 with Moldratha the Grave Tide. Dominaria was released in April of 2018. Back then, there was no trouble in the world, no nothing going on, only blue skies and sweet times. My buddies and I decided to open a box and draft. So I got to keep the sweet fire song and sun speaker, which is completely worthless today. My buddy Chris opened a Moldratha and I was immediately enamored. This was a really cool take on Graveyard Matters and he built a really cool deck around it. The value was fantastic and I resolved to remove Moldratha whenever I saw her hit the table. By the time I got around to looking into buying a copy, it was around 15 bucks or so, so I decided to wait for a reprint. Well, the time is upon us. Moldratha's getting a reprint and Double Mac and Cheese 2022 reprint set. Or uh, as it's known, Double Masters 2022. Moldratha the Gravetide, 3 black, a green, and a blue for a legendary creature, Elemental Avatar, it's a 6-6. Six, six. During each of your turns, you may play a land and cast a permanent spell of each permanent type from your graveyard. Since we got a reprint, I decided to look at some high synergy cards, and lo and behold, there are a bunch from recent sets that are dirt cheap. Let's build a $50 commander deck that's 50 cents per card. Let's go. Hey, before we get too deep into this video, I want to ask you guys just to hit the subscribe button. It's free. It's easy. It's a dang service to humanity. You'll get all my videos and you'll get all my sweet budget decks. All right, so the first thing we're going to need is a little self mill. And um, we're going to want permanents of different permanent types. So let's take a look at some Planeswalkers. We got Tamiyo, Collector of Tales. Two green and a blue for a legendary Planeswalker Tamiyo. Starting loyalty is five. Pretty good. Spells and abilities your opponent's control can't cause you to discard cards or sacrifice permanents. I like that. Plus one, choose a non-land card name, then reveal the top four cards of your library. Put all cards with the chosen name from among them into your hand and the rest in your graveyard. Basically, you can just choose any card and just mill four. Uh, negative three is return target card from your graveyard to your hand, which come in real handy late game. The plus one is what we want to focus on, and the static ability is basically situational gravy. How's about Ashiok Dream Render? One hybrid Demir, hybrid Demir for a legendary Planeswalker Ashiok. Starting loyalty is five. Spells and abilities your opponent's control can't cause their controller to search their library. Also an amazing effect in Commander. You have one negative one ability, target player mills four cards, then exile each opponent's graveyard. So you can mill yourself for four cards and then exile everybody else's graveyard. This shines in a self mill deck and we can hose all of our opponents. New card from Commander Legends 2, Kaga. Shadow Archdruid, two black and a green for a legendary creature, it's an elf druid, one four. Whenever Kaga Shadow Archdruid attacks, it gains death touch until the end of turn, mill two cards. It also has once during each of your turn, you may play a land or cast a permanent spell from among cards in your graveyard that were put there from your library this turn. This is a mini mill Moldratha that helps us out in the self mill department. Nyx Weaver is one black and a green enchantment creature spider. It's a 2-3 with reach. At the beginning of your upkeep, mill two cards. It also has one black and a green exile Nyx Weaver. Return target card from your graveyard to your hand. Cute little self-mill role players like this are what keep the gears turning in this deck. Sidisi Brood Tyrant. I always thought this was a cool commander. It's one black, green, and a blue for a legendary creature, Naga Shaman. It's a 3 3. Whenever Sidisi Brood Tyrant enters the battlefield or attacks, mill three cards. Whenever one or more creature cards are put into your graveyard from your library, create a 2 2 black zombie creature token. This fuels our aristocrat strategies with extra bodies and our graveyard strategies with a little mill. Old Mr. Stinky Fingers, X black and a green for a legendary creature, it's a horror. When you cast the spell, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal X creature cards. Put all creature cards revealed this way in your graveyard, put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So this guy's a self-mill superstar. Um, I originally read this as Stinky Fingers, so yeah, I'm gonna go with that. The card naming convention in the new Innistrad sets is to put old in front of whatever it is. So this is old Rutstein, one black and a green for a legendary creature. He's a human peasant. He's a 1-4. When he enters the battlefield or at the beginning of your upkeep, mill a card. If a land card is milled this way, create a treasure token. If a creature card is milled this way, create a 1-1 one, one green insect creature token. If a non-creature, non-land card is milled this way, create a blood token. Well, from one old card to another, this guy is a three man of value engine. He really shines in the 99 of a deck like this. Angel of Suffering. Uh oh, somebody's been talking to my ex girlfriend again. Three black black for a creature, Nightmare Angel. It's a 5 3 with flying. If damage would be dealt to you, prevent that damage and mill twice that many cards. This is one of the few black angels that I know of and is pretty awesome in a deck that wants to mill itself. 
I figure if you mill out with this, that's 40 or so damage that was done to you anyway, so whatever. Moldrotha deck needs some graveyard synergies, so let's take a look at this weirdo. Root Coil Creeper. It's green and a blue for a creature. It's a plant horror 2-2. Tap, add one mana of any color, so it's just kind of a mana dork. So it also has tap, add two mana of any one color. Spend this mana only to cast spells from your graveyard. It also has green, blue, and tap. Exile Root Creeper, return target card with flashback you own from exile to your hand. That third ability is probably not going to come in too handy, but we are casting cards with Moldrotha from the graveyard, so this weird plant horror can double as a mana dork. Tormod the Desecrator, 3 and black mana for a legendary creature, Zombie Wizard, it's 4-2. Whenever one or more cards leave your graveyard, create a tapped 2-2 black zombie creature token, also as partner. This guy says cards, so any lands and anything else you get out with Muldrotha counts to make a zombie. When I first saw this spoiled, I thought it was incredibly powerful. Um, and there's a great deck you could probably build just around this guy, but he's an all-star in a Muldrotha deck, for sure. River Kelpie. This guy's ordering Grubhub to the swamp for sure. He's three blue blue for a creature. He's a beast. Three three. Whenever River Kelpie or another permanent enters the battlefield from a graveyard, draw a card. Whenever a player casts a spell from a graveyard, draw a card. He's also got Persist. So when he dies, if he didn't have a minus one minus one counter on him, he comes back to the battlefield with a minus one minus one counter. He's also going to draw you a card. This guy is truly a beast. He looks like my sixth grade shop teacher, but he's got too many fingers. Gravebreaker Lamia, yeah. Four and a black for an enchantment creature, Snake Lamia 4-4 four, four with lifelink. When Gravebreaker Lamia enters the battlefield, search your library for a card, put it in your graveyard, then shuffle. Spells you cast from your graveyard cast, one less to cast. This is a tailor-made card for Muldrotha. You can get any of our toolbox permanents. A Lamia is a woman who's also a snake, and she has a built-in bra made of scales, which is nice. Secrets of the Dead, two and a blue for an enchantment. Whenever you cast a spell from your graveyard, draw a card. This keeps our hands full for three mana. All right, so we got our graveyard full. We have a value engine going. We got lots of permanent base ramp and interaction. So how do we win? Well, we have our aristocrats and our sacrifice outlets. Aristocrats include the usual suspects. We have Zulaport Cutthroat, Vindictive Vampire, Bastion of Remembrance, and Sir Conrad. Sir Conrad the Grim, I'll read him again. Three black black for a legendary creature, Human Knights, 5-4. Whenever another creature dies or a creature card is put into a graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield or a creature card leaves your graveyard, Sir Conrad the Grim deals one damage to each opponent. He also has one in the black. Each player mills a card. This is a great card in this deck. It's only like a dollar. It's a very fantastic and friendly um, aristocrat that we can use in any black deck. We also have Agent of the Iron Thrones, two and a black for a legendary enchantment background from the new Commander Legend set. Commander creatures you own have whenever an artifact or creature you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, each opponent loses one life. So this is great. It's new from Baldur's Gate. It's a legendary background that makes our commander an aristocrat, and it's a permanent we can get back from the yard. Sacrifice outlets include some of our usual suspects. So we have Viscera Seer, Carrion Feeder, but there's some other fun cards as well, like Dark Privilege. One in a black for an enchantment aura, enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one. Sacrifice a creature, regenerate enchanted creature. This little nasty gram can save Muldrotha uh, from a destroy spell or a board wipe and is an instant free sacrifice outlet we can activate anytime. And out of Strixhaven, we got Dina, Soul Steeper. Black and a green for a legendary creature, Dryad, Druid, 1-3. Whenever you gain life, each opponent loses one life, so that doubles up our Aristocrats' effects. We also have one, Sacrifice Another Creature. Dina, Soul Steeper, gets plus X, plus O until the end of turn, where X is the Sacrifice creature's power. This is a great card, and this deck does a lot. Lord of the Forsaken, four black black for a creature demon. It's a 6-6 six, six with flying trample. I don't know what world I'm living in where this thing is only a dollar. It also has black, sacrifice another creature, target player mills three cards. You're going to target yourself, okay? Then you pay one life, add a colorless mana, spend this mana only to cast a spell from your graveyard. This guy does so much in this deck. It's a 6-6 six, six flyer with flamp stamps, and it's a sack outlet and a mill enabler. Just buy it. You want cards like Shriek Maw, Mole Drifter, things that come into the battlefield, sacrifice themselves, and then you can recast that over and over again as a removal spell. In the case of Mole Drifter, you're going to be drawn two cards. 
You also want little value cards that sacrifice themselves. How about Spore Frog? Everybody loves Spore Frog. How about Unbridled Growth? It's one green mana for an enchantment aura. Enchants one of your lands. It has tap, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. That's great. You can sacrifice Unbridled Growth, draw a card, and then with Mildrotha, you just cast it again so it's one green mana to draw a card. Anyways, man, Goldfish the deck. There are some tweaks I would make with a bigger budget, but by turn 8 this deck can assemble a pretty dangerous board state and can usually aristocrat someone for 14, 20 life, hit all your opponents and gain a bunch of life. So try it out, man. You gotta try it out. This is gonna be Nikki G from Better Commander signing off.